out of a, because I don't even know if that one's in my handoff. It's not really a tab. It is a
Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. First lesson is from Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. <clears throat> Therefore, thus says the Lord and God of Israel concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute in righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalms 46 by full verse, responsibly. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea. Through its waters, th though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult. The Lord of hosts is with us. <laughs> there is a river whose stream make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us, and the God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord. What awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who makes war to cease in all the world. He breaks the vow. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the, the nations. I will ex be exalted in the earth. The Lord, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. lesson comes from the book of Colossians. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, 
the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of God. Of his cross. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. There we go. There you go. This is the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him, offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are king of, of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed, and we indeed have yet been condemned justly for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man, who has done nothing wrong, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Abide in me, Lord Christ, and I in you. Amen. Please be seated. We are at the last Sunday of the church year. If you didn't know that, here's your reminder. Some of you, I suspect, do, and some of you, maybe you've forgotten that, and that's just dandy. Um, I can tell you a little bit about it right now. <laughs> so this is Christ the King Sunday which fits because it's the culmination of the church calendar year in which it makes sense that we would celebrate and remember in sort of the, the, uh, the largest way possible we can remind ourselves of who all this Christ, this Jesus, this human being, this person, this brother, who also is God and Christ in that sort of mythic big sense, who is this person, and what do they call us, who does he call us to be, and how does he call us to live? Kings are usually, right, uh, in the business of having order. 
You can look back through history, right, and how we have organized ourselves throughout the history of the world, and that we have leaders who, who are adopted and chosen to um, help sort of set the direction and the pace of where we're going uh, in the best of times, uh, and, and how that's lived out. And so, Typically, when we think of kings, right, I could, I could ask some of our younger friends here, what do kings wear? Do I have any, any takers? What do we usually have on top of kings' heads? Charlotte, what do you think? Yes, kings wear crowns. And what are the... Velvet cake, okay, velvet cape and crowns, yes, Mary. A robe, yes. And is the crown a small, little, tiny little crown, or is it usually huge, right? And glistening and glittering. It's beautiful. That is typically what we think about with a king, right? Or a ruler, or the one who is in charge, and they must look big and grand. Except, what kind of king do we have in Jesus? Any taker? Oh, okay. You guys, they're showing you up right now. I'm just saying. <laughs> Cora's got one. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. The Thanksgiving of what? C communion or what are you... Uh, okay, well, that is the way we give thanks. Yes, Eucharist does mean giving thanks. That's true. And God did create us. Yes, so now you're sort of getting into this king that we know as Jesus, except this king doesn't wear a fancy, big, bedazzled crown with bling. Mary, what does this king wear? Okay, a king is a friend, but this king wears a crown of thorns, right? Not of big jewels. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is the risk that sometimes we take. We never know what we're going to hear. But you guys got it. You're, you're painting this picture for who this Christ the King is, except it's not really what we would think of as a king. We have our king who wears a crown of thorns. Not, not to, to go unnoticed. I have a few of these that I'll leave in the back if you're interested in taking one, because as I thought about who our king was this week and our traditional historical understanding of who a king and a leader is and the kind of king that Jesus is, it's not quite the same. And it's hard for me to really like take that in, and I think that's not unusual because the ways that Jesus challenges us as, a, as our leader, as our Messiah, um, are things that are really challenging and hard to get our heads and our hearts around. So I was, um, had been pondering this, and this was a, a very, um, what's the word I would say, uh, succinct just illustration of who this king is, this Christ the king that we follow, who has a crown of thorns. And this is a particular priest that I uh, follow as well by Reverend Kremer, and he writes this, just to, to notice this king. We want the war horse, Reverend Kramer says. Jesus rides a donkey. We want the eagle. The Holy Spirit descends as a dove. We want to take up swords. Jesus takes up a cross. We want the roaring lion. God comes to us as a slaughtered lamb. You see the pattern? We keep trying to arm God in different ways with our own sort of personal perspective. All throughout history, we keep trying to arm God, and God keeps trying to disarm us. This is our king. Our king is not one to come and lord it over us and to rule with fear and fire and brimstone but the one who comes to love us in surprising ways and teach us in surprising ways how to love each other and ourselves, all right? So this is our king that we follow. Also, as I've been thinking this week, 
and journeying along in our uh, formation class that we're doing at nine uh, Sundays and then also at noon on Tuesdays, uh, we've been looking at an, uh, embracing an alternative orthodoxy with Father Richard Rohr, who is a Franciscan uh, over in Albuquerque and uh, has been, as you've heard me talk about, uh, very influential on my life and how I understand who God is and who God is calling me to be. And I mention him because he's helpful for me to think about the process by which I get away from always wanting a war horse and can embrace that Jesus rides the donkey, a rather unmajestic, loud, annoying, irritating, sort of lower class sort of animal, right? I'm always wanting that the world tells me to want and do, and yet Jesus is always finding ways to say, mm-mm, not sure that's going to work out very well for you, but you can try it if you want. Go for it. So Richard Rohr talks about these stages of spiritual development. You can look at it from psychology as well, uh, human development, and you can follow this throughout history. Um, I think in our 21st century, we're understanding more and more from science that is mirroring spiritual practices that we also have known for several centuries that work in the church and we're starting to see those come to life even in uh, science in relatively recent history. And so Richard's process of thinking about how I can move from wanting what the ego, what the human wants, the war horse to the donkey, wanting the eagle, which are beautiful animals, and yet needing to be open to the fact that God's spirit descends as a dove of peace. You see what I'm saying? That we want this, that mm, Jesus is calling us to be this way. And so I can look back at my life and think, okay, I was an infant. I was a child. Those early years, um, I was getting to know the very basics of who I was as a person, right? All the way through my growing up years. We all have that, right? But that's, that's all where we start. And we start making our journey at various times and various points in, in different ways, but we all are hopefully moving towards this person that Jesus is calling us to be. But it's not always easy, right? Because there's this next stage, which is tribal, and history shows us that, right? It's us and them. And, and Richard would say that's the third stage of the nine. So we spend time tribal, us and them, sort of similar to where we are in our world right now, we can get stuck there. We can move up to the next sort of rational space, the, the next sort of rational stage. And that's, okay, there could be different ways of understanding things, but if I don't understand it, then it's wrong. And we have to make doctrines and beliefs to support what we believe if we can't understand something else. So you can see how this is constantly... Jesus is putting before us something that we can become more like him, and we have to kind of push back against our ego, ego or our human desires. So we keep moving up these stages. It's not a race. It's not a, I'm going to get there first. It's just a, a growing awareness or dawning so that eventually, you know, we can get to where we see the world globalized today and all of the different religious traditions, but how do they fit together? That's our world partly right now. And then some of you all have been alive long enough to know that sometimes it can be a subtle experience or stage um, where things start to fall apart where you start to look for meaning or you experience pain or confusion. Some would say it's a dark night of the soul. Others would say it's just sort of pieces of the false self slowly just fall away with practice and you empty yourself of it. And it's then you can sort of move up to that next part and you go, aha, I get what Jesus was trying to say. And you can operate more in a both and sort of way. And I think that's what Jesus the Christ is calling us, to Christ the King, to leave behind that worldly understanding of who we think our King, our Messiah is, and to move into a broader understanding of who he is and who he is calling us to be. 
I want to be clear, when we move through these stages, we're not moving from one and leaving it behind and throwing the baby out with the bathwater and carrying on. It's more like a tree that grows, and you have the growth rings that just add on top, on top, on top, and include and integrate and move to that next level. And I think that is our invitation and the reminder as we make our way to the new church calendar year, it's a beautiful reminder of who ultimately this Christ the King is and ultimately what this Christ the King is calling us to do because we're going to begin again where we ended on our calendar year and do the whole thing again. But hopefully we go a little farther up and a little farther in and we find the ways that God loves us know God loves us, we see how God loves us, and we find a way also that God isn't quite done with each of us yet. So may, may we continue to think about who the model of Christ the King is, who he is calling us to be in the world, and what he is calling us to leave behind so that we can experience more fully the peace of Christ, Christ the King that passes all understanding. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all families in their daily lives and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, especially those affected by Hurricane Ian. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, especially Al, Bill, Bob, Bobby, Candy, Caroline, Dave, David, Evelyn, Helen, James, Jason, Jason, Jean, Joe, June, Catherine. Laverne, Lucille, Luke, Paisley, Pat, Rose, Russ, the Ryan family, Sherry, and Wayne. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. 
for the peace and unity of the church of God. For Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, and Paulson Reed, our bishop, and for the bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and God's church. For the special need and concerns of this creation, of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy and grace. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially birthdays for Leo Martinez, Jerry Cood, and Yvonne Todd, and the anniversary for Bob and Jean Harbison, and for Bill Cunningham and Mary Ruth Prose. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all those who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially Carrie Dolzal. And Dr. Smith. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Please kneel as you are able. <clears throat> Have mercy on us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us. our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please rise. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. You all welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Please be seated. Please be seated. I have a few uh, a few announcements. Uh, just just a uh, reminder of um, announcements that are on the back page uh, here. All right. You all can check them out. Some of it is familiar to you already. I would draw attention to uh, the altar flowers and the altar candles. The sign-up sheets are in the back. If you fill out a little slip and put it in the um, offering plate, Allie will get that. Just um, do a better job with your handwriting than I would probably do so that she doesn't have to call you and say, okay, what's this? And we want to get the name right, so make sure we can spell the name, who they're in honor of, and, and that sort of thing. But those are back there as well. And then next to them are the upcoming events, all right? So kiddos, December 4th, not next Sunday, but two Sundays from today, we have uh, angel tree gifts that we need to purchase for a couple of families from the Salvation army. So we're going to have a lunch after church, very brief, and then we'll head out uh, and do our shopping for the families and get those gifts taken care of. So December 4th, um, directly after church. And then also later that week, you have seen, you've heard me mention this, December 8th, it's a Thursday. So a lovely little graphic here and a QR code. You could scan it during the offertory uh, and sign up to ring the bell. For the Salvation Army, it'll be at the homeland on 67th and cash, all right? Um, 10 to 6 are the options there. If you have any questions about that, let me know. Um, but those are the two things, and again, that'll be here uh, before you know it. And then also, as you're making Christmas plans, you'll see our Christmas Eve worship is December 24th um, at 730 
if you haven't recognized or realized this yet, Sunday, the Christmas Day is a Sunday, okay? So we are going to count Christmas Eve worship as Christmas Day worship because that is within our lovely Jewish uh, roots of having a day start when the sun down, the sun goes down the previous day, right? So like if we do our Easter vigil, which we haven't done here for several years, I understand, at the first celebration of the uh, r- arrival of Easter, typically that happens Saturday evening because that's when the sun went down and it is already Easter, okay? So that is uh, the same idea, December 24th. January 1, we will gather for uh, worship, but it'll be 11 o'clock. It'll be a brunch. We'll have bubbly drinks, alcoholic, non-alcoholic, some wonderful food, board games, 11 o'clock in the parish hall, um, uh, informal worship, and then we'll just hang out. So if you haven't had enough of people or you want to see some different people (laughs) and you want to come and play some board games, come hang out with us. All ages are welcome, okay? Um, That's that. So um, I'm aware that people are traveling this Sunday and certainly next Sunday. Um, but um, it will be wonderful to, to celebrate Advent with you all, which we're starting next Sunday, believe it or not. So um, with that, ascribe in the Lord the honor due God's name, bring offerings, and come into God's courts. <laughs> King of glory, King of peace, I will love thee, and that love may never cease. I will move thee, thou hast granted my request, thou hast heard me. Thou didst note my working breast, Thou hast spared me. Wherefore with my utmost heart I will sing Thee, And the cream of all my heart I will bring Thee. My sins against me cried, Thou didst clear me. And alone when they replied, Thou didst hear me. Seven whole days, not one in seven, I will praise Thee. In my heart, though not in heaven, I can raise thee. Small it is in this poor sword to enroll thee. In eternity's too short to extol thee. Please rise. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high, by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world. 
and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join with the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. Please stand, sit, or kneel as is meaningful for you. Glory and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You call the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, Remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and ascension, longing for Christ coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made. We acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. And grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather with us with all your people and to the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless. And we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one. Lord, you servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body. One Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Many the gifts, many the works, one in the Lord. One Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Rain for the fields scattered and grown gathered to One Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth.
Continuing together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May it be with you and remain with you always. Amen. We gotta go fast, because it's short. Savior, like a shepherd, shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us. For our use thy folds prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast brought us to thine we are. Early let us seek thy favor, Early let us learn thy will, do thou, Lord, our only Savior, with thy love our bosoms fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us, love us still. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.